Welcome back, cool trainers. This video is a follow-up to our Vending Series 1 video, where we will be discussing Vending Series 2 and 3. As mentioned in the first video, Vending Series isn't the official title for this series of cards. The actual translation is Expansion Sheet, however most English language Pokemon collectors know this set by Vending Series, and I prefer that nomenclature too. So, for all intents and purposes, that's how I'll be referring to these cards throughout the video. If you haven't seen our first video on the Vending series, I'll leave a link in the description below, but if you'd rather just watch this video, I'll need to sum up a few things first. The Vending series of cards were an expansion of Pokémon cards released exclusively in Japan back in 1998. These cards were unique, as they were peeled off of sheets that collectors could buy via officially licensed Pokemon vending machines. These cards featured a glossy finish, which contrasts heavily from the traditional matte finished card stock we usually see on Pokemon cards. They were also identifiable by the Pokeball expansion symbol, though other Japanese promotional cards would share this same expansion symbol without actually being from the Vending series. In the first video, we touched on Series 1 and the Series 0 sheets, so now I think it's time we discussed Series 2 and 3. Vending Series 2 was released on June 17, 1998, only a few short months after Series 1 debuted. Series 2 sheets would also come to be known as red sheets due to the coloration on the back of the sheets. Series 2 featured 36 cards spanning across 18 sheets, just like Series 1. Remember, these sheets are numbered in the lower right hand corner, and what this means is that each sheet's contents will always be the same. For instance, sheet number 10 from Series 2 will always feature Graveler, Venomoth, and Fero. I don't want to spend a ton of time going over the contents of Series 2 like we did for Series 1, as this wave of cards was pretty straightforward in terms of what it had to offer. Once again, the sheets were divided up by six areas of the Kanto region, and Series 2 can be broken down as follows. Area 1 was Rock Tunnel, Area 2 was Power Plant. Area 3, Seafoam Islands, number 1. Area 4, Victory Road. Area 5, Saffron City. and Area 6, Cinnabar Island number 1. I know I went through those set contents kind of fast, but some of these cards saw printing in English like this Articuno, which was reprinted as a Wizards of the Coast Black Star promo. The same can be said for this Electabuzz. As you probably saw in the brief overview of Series 2's contents, this wave had some great releases. However, several months later, Series 3 would launch, and it would bring a lot more to the table. Series 3, also known as the Green Sheets, launched November 24th, 1998, and it changed things up in a few key ways. First, Series 3 would consist of 53 unique cards, as opposed to the 36 cards of Series 1 and 2. This set still consisted of 18 sheets, but now there were four cards per sheet. One of the four cards featured on Series 3 sheets would feature an unusual backing. These cards were joke cards, meaning that they featured extra game rules or deck building ideas. For example, one of the extra rule cards was called 3 vs. 3 Doug Trio Team Battle, and the card's translation is as follows. Three people form a team, each bringing decks with different contents, and battle team versus team. Each team decides the order its members will battle in, 
and the battles begin one-on-one. -on -one. When all three persons' battles are over, the team that won twice wins. If you have more friends playing with Pokemon cards, give it a try. Series 3 would also feature several cards with deck building ideas like these. This time around, the set would revisit previous areas explored on other vending series sheets, as well as a few new, er new areas. Series 3's contents can be broken down as follows. Area 1, Lavender Town. Area 2, Cinnabar Island number 2. Area 3, Safari Zone, number 2. Area 4, Seafoam Islands, number 2. Area 5, Cerulean Cave, number 2. And Area 6, Sea Cottage. Several cards from Series 3 saw English reprints, also as part of Wizards of the Coast Black Star promos. Those cards were Scyther, Magmar, and Pokemon Tower. The last thing I want to touch on is what I consider to be the most interesting part about Vending Series 3. Uh, series 3 sheets advertised the Evolution by Mail campaign, and I've made an entire video on this marketing campaign already. So I'll link to that in the description as well, but I'll also sum it up quickly here. The Evolution by Mail campaign enabled collectors to mail in a copy of Kadabra, Machoke, Graveler, Haunter, or Ammonite, along with a copy of Bill's PC in order to achieve each Pokemon's respective evolution card. So for you to get an Alex Alakazam, you'd have to mail in a copy of Kadabra and Bill's PC to receive it. The cards that were mailed back became known as Masaki promos and arrived in envelopes that looked like this. The Masaki promos were all holographic, which was unique as none of the regular vending machine series cards, cards had a holographic pattern. They've also held long-term value as they're somewhat rare due to the methodology in which they had to be acquired. It's also difficult to find them in high-grade form as they were sent through the mail with little protection, as you saw in the photo just a couple of minutes or seconds ago. That is it for this video and this series on the Vending Machine series of cards. Uh, I hope you liked this video, and I hope you like my Pokemon card history series of videos. If you do, please share them with somebody else who might. And as always, be sure to like, comment, or subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I'll see you next time.